Well, meanwhile, in an interview with the French newspaper, President Putin said that it is those who lost elections in the US who are continuing to play the anti-Russia card. RT's Emily Sue has the details on that. Commenting on the ongoing anti-Russia hysteria in the U.S., President Putin said that there is a powerful bureaucracy that is stopping U.S. presidents from making any significant changes to the existing policies, and that includes Donald Trump. Take a listen to what exactly Putin said. The U.S. president is steering a traditional U.S. policy. Of course, we remember that during his election campaign, and also after he was elected and assumed office, President Trump spoke about his intention to normalize the relationship with Russia, and said that it cannot be any worse. We remember this. However, we also see and realize that the political situation in the United States is influenced by those who have lost the elections but refuse to accept their defeat, and who continue to use the anti-Russia card and various allegations most actively in the political infighting. Putin went on to say that it's not just Trump who said that he wants to improve relations with Russia. In fact, NATO officials have adopted a similar rhetoric. However, he pointed out there seems to be an inner contradiction of this NATO policy of on one hand saying that they want to improve relations with Moscow, but on the other, increasing their military spending. He described this as a short-sighted policy for NATO officials to invent a fictional threat from Russia instead of uh, tackling this common security threat of terrorism. And he has urged on all sides to cooperate to tackle this threat together. He went on to comment on the ongoing conflict in Syria as well, and specifically, Putin talked about the alleged chemical attack that happened in the beginning of April uh, in the province of Idlib, where at least 70 people have been killed. Now, the West have accused the Assad regime of being behind this chemical attack, whereas Russia, since day one, has been calling for a thorough investigation into this matter before pointing fingers at anyone. Here's what Putin said. When the attack happened, we called on our American partners and everyone else who considers this to be expedient to send inspectors to the airfield from which the planes that dropped chemical bombs allegedly took off. If chemical weapons were used by President al-Assad office agencies, modern verification equipment would certainly find traces of this at the airfield. For certain, these traces would be found on the aircraft and the airfield. However, everyone refuses to conduct such an inspection. We also propose sending inspectors to the site of the alleged chemical attack, but they refused as well, claiming that it was dangerous. Why is this dangerous if the attack was delivered at an area where peaceful civilians live and the non-extremist part of the armed opposition is deployed? In my opinion, the accusations have been made for the sole purpose of justifying the use of additional measures, including military ones, against al-Assad. That is all. There is no proof that al-Assad has used chemical weapons. We firmly believe that this is a provocation. President al-Assad did not use chemical weapons. Now, staying on Syria, Putin also commented on the latest significant development that came out of the so-called Astana peace talks brokered by Iran, Russia and Turkey, the setup of these de-escalation zones. Putin described this as a first and very important step towards peace and said that this cannot have been done without the so-called opposition armed groups. However, Putin stressed that he hopes these de-escalation zones won't become the blueprint for the future territorial division of Syria, urging the groups that they will eventually be in control of these de-escalation zones to cooperate fully with the official Syrian authorities.